Hi, Darren from Select Driving School here. Today I want to talk about car tech and to just give you an overview of some of the features that you'll find in a lot of modern cars today, some of which you'll use without knowing it, some of which you'll not be aware of. Um, and just to try and get you um, an idea of what's out there to help you and some of which you won't necessarily have on your first car. So I drive a Ford Puma um, and uh, it's a new car and it's got quite a lot of tech on it, some of which they say you'll be using um, without necessarily knowing it when we're doing our driving lessons and some of which we don't always look at. Um, so first of all, let's quickly go through the, the sort of standard stuff that you, you should already know, uh, the things that you'll need to know for your show me questions. So things like how do we operate the uh, demisting on the car? So rear demister is here and front demister is here or if you want to do the whole lot at once use the max button. Switch it off again because it's quite noisy. Wipers are on the stalk over here so um, we're asked to wash the front windscreen by pulling it towards us or wash the back screen, windscreen by pushing it away. Headlights down here they're usually in the auto position, turn them once to put them um, on manually. Um, the horn, pretty standard on most cars, just in the middle here. And finally, the windows, which we wind down using the switches here. These are one-shot windows, so they'll go all the way down, like most modern cars will, and come all the way back up without you having to hold your finger on there. So those are sort of like the, the standard things and you know, those are what you're asked uh, during your driving test. But there's a lot more to the cars today. Um, so I thought we'd go through some of those items here. So first of all, the, we mentioned the lights in the wipers briefly there. This car's got auto lights um, and the switch is in that position. It defaults to that position when the car starts. And that means that the headlights will come on automatically when the light levels drop. Um, they'll also come on whenever the wipers operate because that's good practice to have your lights on when it's raining. Uh, things to be aware of, uh, one is that they won't come on in foggy conditions, generally speaking, unless it's at night, which in which case they'll be on anyway. But daylight fog, uh, the light levels are still good and the car won't realise that the lights need to come on. So you do need to remember to do that manually. And that uh, question of remembering is also key because uh, if you swap between cars, one has auto lights and one doesn't, it becomes very easy to forget to switch your lights on because you've become used to it being done for you. So you do have to remember with all these driver aids, they're there to help you, um, but you can't rely on them. You must remember that it's always your responsibility to do things. Um, the wipers, these are also auto, and this has a number of positions. Um, that's the off position, but again, it's usually in that position there, which means that they're on auto and the wipers will come on and off based on the rain that they sense. Um, so moving on to some of the more hidden technology. We also have, um, on all cars nowadays, we have what's called the anti-lock braking system. So you see the ABS light there. Now that's basically a passive system and that's only going to kick in when you need it. I, when you're braking too heavily um, and the anti-lock brakes will present, try to prevent the wheels from locking up. Similar to that, we have something called traction control. Now again, all modern cars have to have traction control um, and by default the traction control will be on. If we switch that off, we'll see a symbol come up on the dashboard and that little orange symbol there is the symbol for traction control. Um, together with the symbol over here and you can see here it's showing us off and that's basically warning you that the car is not going to attempt to correct any skids um, that may occur um, so you wouldn't really want to switch your traction control off in normal conditions uh, you want to keep that on to try and let the car help you out if you uh, get yourself into trouble um, there are times when switching it off may be useful, um, but they're usually when you've maybe got the car stuck in slippery conditions. Sometimes having the traction control off can help you get going again, um, but for the most part you're going to be keeping that on. 
So now let's move on to some of the facilities that you're less likely to be familiar with and are not standard on all cars. So first of all, uh, this little button here on the end of the indicators um, is the lane keeping system. Okay, so I usually have this switched off uh, during lessons because it can be a little bit distracting. But what that will basically do is it will use sensors outside the car to detect if you're wandering out of your lane. So wandering across the white lines. Um, if it doesn't believe you're doing that deliberately, um, I have not indicated and the turning of the wheel it doesn't seem to be particularly conscious then the car will beep at you and also you will feel a tug on the steering wheel as it tries to pull you back into your lane. So as I say, that's usually switched off, that's the lane keeping system. Going back to the lights, um, this car has got what's called auto high beam. So when the lights are on, so I'll switch the lights on. Um, I'll switch the fog light on there, don't want that on. Um, so when the lights are on, um, we see that little green symbol and that's the dipped headlights. If we push it forward we get the full beam, um, which is one of your questions on your tell me's, how can you tell the difference between full beam and, and dipped headlights. Uh, this car, car's got auto high beam, obviously it's light today so I can't show you this, but again what that means is that as you're driving along in the dark, with the lights on auto, the car will sense whether or not it needs to put the high beam on based on um, light conditions ahead and they'll automatically come on and off, um, saving you the switching of the uh, flick switch here. Now, um, something that we do sometimes use on lessons, the speed limiter. If we press this button here, we'll see on the dashboard that the car is now telling us it's going to limit the speed to 20 miles an hour and it's picking that up from the um, sensors that work out what the speed limit is for the current road. Uh, the way the car picks up the current speed limit um, is based on a camera set just behind the uh, rear view mirror that will read speed limit signs and update as it passes a new sign um, but it also uses data from the um, sat nav system which has built in speed limits um, to also uh, update the, the current speed limit. So the way the speed limit works on here is that um, as that symbol here changes and picks up new speed limits, the car will uh, allow the speed to pick up or expect it to reduce to the uh, speed indicated in the green. Um, you can override it. Uh, if you need to have a quick burst of speed, then putting the headlight, uh, sorry, putting the accelerator down uh, quite firmly will override it and it will allow the car to pick up above the, the speed indicated but generally speaking if you're just driving along normally you'll find that as you hit the limited speed the car just won't speed up anymore and you'll feel it sort of backing off. So that's the speed limiter. Similar to that we have what's called cruise control. So cruise control we can see a little symbol there saying whether it's set or not. Probably won't let me set it at the moment because we're not moving. Um, but I would use the buttons here to set the speed, this little RES button, you would push it up to say that you want to pick a higher speed or down to pick a lower speed. And what that will do is kind of the opposite to the speed limiter. Um, it will take the car up to whatever the indicated speed is and then it will just keep it there. Um, that's for use really when you on the likes of uh, motorways etc where you've got a nice steady stretch of road ahead of you and you're not in and out of traffic. So again that's cruise control, again that's fitted on an awful lot of cars these days. Um, auto stop start uh, is on this car as well, so we've got a button here which would allow us to switch it off and if we do that then again we get a message on the dashboard telling us that it's been switched off. Um, during lessons we tend to have that off nowadays because it does make the car a little less temperamental to drive if you're not 100% uh, used to the clutch and driving it every day. But it does have the advantages uh, once you're completely happy with the car and you're not uh, uh, you're getting the clutch exactly right then what that will do is basically switch the engine off when you're queuing in traffic um, thus reducing pollution and saving you a bit of fuel and then it will switch the engine back on as soon as you engage the clutch in a gear. We also have on the car a hybrid system. 
Um, so the car's got a partial electric motor. Now this car's not a full hybrid, so it never runs fully on electric. Instead what it does is it uses the power that it harvests from the brakes to give you a little extra boost when you put your foot down or to power the electrics inside the car, um, thus saving the, the main battery um, and also giving you a little bit of a, a fuel saving when the, the battery is helping the car um, to to move along in, uh, in, in conjunction with the, the petrol engine. Um, the little battery symbol um, that will show up uh, green when the car is harvesting uh, power from the brakes, that tends to be when you come off the gas, and the little wheel symbol, the little turbo symbol, will show up blue when the car is delivering power from the battery. So what else have we got? We also have some additional uh, demisting facilities down here. This little button here, um, this is on some cars nowadays, and this is a heated front windscreen. So as well as the heated rear windscreen, which you'll find on all cars, this one has a heated front windscreen, which means that it can clear off frost from and you know, to some extent ice uh, on, a, on a cold morning saving you having to scrape it. You do still have to clear off uh, surplus snow etc but it does save a bit of time managing to clear a windscreen and give you a nice uh, proper view within a couple of minutes. Far better than the sort of letterbox affairs that you see some people trying to do where they just clear a small patch and try and peer through that which is um, well, extremely reckless and almost suicidal. So we also have driving modes on the car. This is a series of programs designed to help you keep control in less than ideal conditions and, and also to take advantage of some of the other facilities of the car. So normally we would have the car uh, just in normal driving mode and the, you know, the car will drive as you would like, become used to it. Uh, just acts, um, does, doesn't do anything in particular, just reacts in a normal way to all of the controls. Uh, we then have an eco mode. Um, and what that will do is basically make the car a little more docile and in effect use a little less fuel. If you're feeling a little bit more um, adventurous then we've got the sport mode um, and that basically does the opposite of eco, it basically tightens everything up and it makes the car a lot more reactive to the accelerator um, and also uh, reduce, uh, switches off the auto stop start that we were talking about earlier. After that we've got a couple of special programs to try and help you when conditions become less than ideal. First one is slippery, um, this is obviously designed for more wintry conditions. Uh, what will happen here is the car will basically make the accelerator less sensitive um, to try and stop it from spinning and it will also potentially use the uh, brakes to try and stop a wheel from spinning if it senses that it's braking traction. Again it's not perfect, um, it's not going to get you out of uh, deep snow but it should help you keep control where the conditions have become a little bit slippery like we have had of late. And then finally we have a trail mode for if you go off uh, off road and onto something a little bit more gravelly um, it's going to perform similar tricks to the slippery mode um, to try and help the car keep going but again it doesn't mean that the car is an off-road car it's certainly not no 4x4 um, and it's not going to cope with such conditions so again the best way of keeping yourself safe when the conditions are not ideal is to try and well avoid the worst of it um, and try and keep everything steady don't rely on these tricks and gadgets to get you out of trouble. So now we're going to have a look at a couple of things to help you with your parking. So like many cars today, it has a rear parking camera. Um, and on here we see the coloured lines indicating how close we are to things behind us. Um, the tip of the green line tends to be about two metres away. The yellow line tends to be about a metre away. And when we're getting into red, we're getting sort of under a metre towards whatever the obstacles are. Um, you will also you be able to use this to help guide you into spaces to sort of show where the back of the car is going to end up and whether it's parallel, for example here we're parallel to the kerb, very near to it. Um, you'll also get white bendy lines appearing on there to indicate to you where the, um, uh, where the uh, 
the front wheels are pointing. Um, here we have a little symbol uh, showing you what the car, sorry, the outside of the car, and this uses the parking sensors to warn you if you're getting too close to obstacles. Um, you're going to get beeping once you start getting too close, and that beeping gets more insistent as you get closer, and the colours around the car change from green to amber and then to red when you're basically too close. There's also a second mode on the camera, um, sorry, just getting that back on, which will allow you to see um, directly below the car so you can see exactly how close you are to something if you need to. Also related to parking, this car has a few tricks of its sleeve in the guise of Park Assist. So again we press this button here and the car is now able to perform parking manoeuvres for you. So this first one is to get out of a space, the second one is for it to reverse into a parking bay, left or right, and the last one is for it to perform the parallel park exercise. Um, in between two cars um, and what the car will do is it will give you a series of instructions on the screen first of all it will identify what the space that it believes it can get into then it will instruct you to stop tell you which gear to use um, basically what you will be doing is controlling the brakes and the steering sorry the brakes and the uh, gas very gentle and slowly and the car will steer itself in or out of the space depending on what you've asked it to do so that's an idea of some of the facilities that you might get on a modern car. Um, say driver aids are all there to help us. Cars are getting more and more sophisticated. They're doing a lot more for us. We're moving towards the age of um, self-drive cars, um, but we're not there yet. So at the moment, what we're finding is that uh, the cars that we drive every day have these little tricks to help us. But the key thing with all of them is they're there to help you not to rely on them. You're still responsible for keeping the car safe and you're, same with your passengers. Um, and you can't sort of just hand off responsibility to the car. So I hope you find that information interesting and useful. Um, if you did, I'd please click like. And uh, if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, where you'll find lots more useful information and videos. Um, and you also find lots of uh, similar uh, on my website. Thank you very much. Until next time.